Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. I've been teaching chemistry for over 20 years and I'm here to help you feel much better about what you've learned in class. Let's learn about writing formulas for acids. Now remember, acids are a molecular compound. So if you're needing more information about writing formulas for molecular compounds that aren't acids, go check out that link below. It's in my description, it's there. Also, I've got practice problems. Don't forget to practice. It's all about the practice. Go get your notes, get something to write with, get a periodic table, and let's get started. Okay, so when we're writing formulas for acids, let's remember that acids are molecular compounds. They are held together with covalent bonds. But since acids are kind of weird and they begin with hydrogen, they act like an ionic compound. So they have different rules for writing the formulas, and the rules are just like ionic compounds. So hopefully this is not anything new. There are two types of acids, binary acids and oxy acids. Binary acids contain the non-metal that comes from the periodic table. A binary acid also just has two elements, a hydrogen, H, and something else. And so when we have a binary acid, we know it's binary because it has the prefix hydro and the suffix ic. So we get hydro, root word, ic. Oxy acids, a little bit different. These are acids that contain oxygen, and the oxygen is part of a polyatomic ion. There are two main polyatomic ion endings. Most of the polyatomic ions either end in ate or ite, like sulfate, carbonate, phosphate, nitrate, or we've got nitrite, sulfite, phosphite. And since there's two different endings to polyatomic ions, there's two different ways to identify them. If the acid contains a polyatomic ion that ends in ite, that ending has been changed to us, O-U-S. So if we see an acid that ends in us, we know that it originally came from a polyatomic ion that ended in ite. Ate changes to ick. So if we have an acid that ends in ick, we know that it originally came from a polyatomic ion with ate. Oxy acids do not use prefixes. We can use the mnemonic device, Mighty Mouse Hates Icky Acid where ite becomes is and ate becomes ick. So let's write the formula for acetic acid. The first thing that we need to notice is that this acid does not have a prefix and it ends in ick. Since it ends in ick, that tells us that it used to end in ate. So this is acetate. And remember, acids begin with H and hydrogen is in group one, so it's a plus one. We have acetate here. Acetate is a negative one. Plus one, minus one, that equals zero. And just like ionic compounds, acids also have to have a net charge of zero. Plus one, minus one, that means hydrogen and acetate is gonna come together in a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's look at hydrofluoric acid. The things we need to notice here, so we notice here we've got hydro and ick. That means the second element comes from the periodic table. And since the root is fluor, that means fluorine. Hydrogen's in group one, so it has a plus one charge. Fluorine's in group 17, it has a negative one charge. Again, one and one, that equals zero. And since hydrogen and fluorine are both ones, that comes together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So we just have HF for hydrofluoric acid. Let's look at one more example, nitrous acid. We need to notice OUS. OUS means that the polyatomic ion ended in ite, so that would be nitrite. And if we look on our polyatomic ion chart, nitrite is NO2 with a minus one charge. So we have H with a plus one, nitrite with a minus one. Again, one to one ratio. So we have HNO2. Okay, so now you should be a pro at writing formulas for acids. If you found this helpful, make sure and subscribe. Also, don't forget to share this link with your friends if they're struggling with writing the formulas for acids. Until next time, bye y'all.